Hello, my name is Bill Lewis of Bill's Lewis Art. Um, I'm a local muralist and artist um, here in Utah, based out of Utah County. Um, and I am here to share with you a lot of um, tips as well as my, prospect, my process and what inspires me as an artist. Um, and a lot of different things that I hope can bring value and information to those of you who are looking to be an artist in the future or just don't know how to get started. Um, and so a lot of this information hopefully can help you along your journey. What is your process? Like what is the process that a mural artist goes through and what is it that you do um, to get these projects or uh, as far as like trying to lock down a client um, and uh, an opportunity. Um, so there's a lot of different um, ways to execute uh, a mural opportunity and the process that um, you, you have to go through is really just looking. So at first, if you want to look for a project, um, I would recommend just Googling, just Google call for artists or um, just kind of look for other areas and other applications that may allow mural artists like Thumbtack or um, Google that'll help you find opportunities. Um, but a big one is, is, uh, is to search call for artists and there are plenty of um, opportunities out there in the nation and so you can go ahead and look at the criteria and what they require for you to apply um, some of the eligibility because some can be local um, some are regional and then some are national calls and so you just kind of see where you can um, be eligible to apply for those projects um, and so Another way is to locally look for opportunities like you can kind of do cold calls for um, local businesses, restaurants, gyms, um, and just kind of any business that you feel that they may be interested in some type of artwork. You can go and talk to the owner, um, kind of see like, hey, is, there, if, is this something that you would like to add to your business um, and see if they're willing to do that. Then you can... Um, you know, figure that out. If if it's a no, then, you know, it's a no. But if it is a yes, you know, the more people you talk to, the more likely you'll get a yes. And so if you get a yes, then that's when you can start, you know, putting in together the, the whole process of how to execute um, the project. And so there's a lot of different ways that um, you can do it. Um, I guess there's a, a, if for a basic way, I guess, to execute uh, a mural job um, and the whole process of it is uh, you would first you want to come to an agreement with the client as far as what it is that they want visually, um, uh, what ideas they're looking for, um, scale of the piece, as well as um, time and materials how much time it'll take to execute that piece, um, how much the materials will cost, and so that will lead right into their budget. And so um, you wanna ask them, you know, if they do, like what is it that they are willing to pay for it and what is it that you're willing to take uh, as an artist? If you're just starting up, you know, obviously your prices will be a lot lower than those that have been doing it professionally for years, uh, those who have been doing it for a long time, they're able to kind of set their own pay scale as far as what they're going to charge uh, per project, per piece. And so a lot of artists kind of charge per square footage or square foot as far as how much um, uh, they're going to charge to execute a mural. And some artists just kind of charge a flat fee. So it kind of varies depending on what you want to do in that area. Um, and so... That's just kind of the beginning of the process is just just locking down the location, uh, locking down the scale, locking down the time frame, um, locking down uh, material, resources, budget, um, and all of that. And then 
once everything is agreed upon as far as a, a rendering or a, an image um, you know then you can and when they're ready to go then you can go ahead and start the whole mural process and so um, the process is you know getting the materials the, the right materials that you need to execute the mural so if you did a rendering with a lot of colors then you're gonna need a lot of different types of colors that fit the rendering um, that you submitted to them um, and so I'd recommend just making sure you get the, the right type of colors um, you don't necessarily have to go overboard with how much of the colors that you do actually need um, you just kind of go play as you go as as far as um, using a whole can of paint if it's spray paint or uh, a bucket of uh, or a gallon of paint see how far that goes and how much space that that would fill up and so it just kind of varies in that way and then um, you can kind of figure out how much you would need after that I would say start with whatever you have and then if it's a lot more of a specific color that you need then I would go um, get more materials of that specific color and then um, if it's not as many uh, colors that you need of a specific color don't get as many uh, materials that you would need for that specific color um, and so the executing process of the mural you know there's a lot of different ways that you can execute that um, and, and I'll talk about that um, along the way during this video um, so some tips as far as executing mural um, a mural I would give is um, first really just sketch out whatever it is that you're trying to paint if you're doing it with spray paint it's good to have a, a good sketch first to kind of know where everything is going proportionally um, and then really just start filling in those uh, spaces with whatever color goes there from your rendering or from your um, your sketch and then after you've already filled in everything that uh, needed to be filled then you start doing the outline process and so start outlining everything um, and then after the outline you can start doing what we call the finesse which is putting in the details um, and especially with spray paint you can always go back and forth with filling and correcting and doing things with the details at the end of the piece um, and so I would recommend just filling it in like sketch first fill it in outline and then start doing the details afterwards. Um, and so while, when you're ready to paint the, the mural, um, there's three ways that I uh, like to, I guess, grid out or figure out how to put um, a small rendering onto a big scale wall, like a, a wall that's like large scale. Um, and then one of the ways is you, you grid it out um, you can do, the, you know, your your basic um, different squares gridded grid system where you measure out like a three by three square is equivalent to um, an inch of your rendering, and so you can kind of look at you can place that grid scale onto your rendering, and then use that to kind of get the right proportions. Um, another way that a lot of artists do it nowadays is called a doodle scale. And a doodle scale is where you go to the actual wall that you're going to be painting and that you start sketching out random objects, random numbers, letters, whatever it is. Um, and so you're just doing it randomly on the wall as far as where you think your mural is going to be painted on. You do it all over the wall and then you take a photo of that wall that you doodle scaled. And then you you can go into Photoshop or use uh, a different type of picture app on your phone where you can put uh, your your rendering your image overlapsed on top of the picture of the wall with the doodle scale on it. And then you lower the opacity of the rendering so that you can see the shapes uh, through the photo, and and then you can use that to. Uh, get the right scale so you can start sketching around those shapes and kind of figure out where this part of the picture is and where um, everything goes and that'll help you to get a good proportion of of uh, that image of the rendering onto the large large wall 
Um, and another quick way to do it is if you um, use a projector. So a lot of mural artists, especially on a huge, large scale, um, use a projector. And so projectors are really good to get the proportions quicker um, and uh, so that you can understand where everything is correctly so that when you do go to paint it, then you know where you're at in the, in the mural process. Um, for example, when I painted um, Saltown Mall in Sandy, Utah, it was 3,200 square feet. And so what I did with the rendering is I broke it up into four sections. And so I did one section at a time. So at each night, I would project the image, kind of figure out where things went while I was up there painting on a boom lift. Um, I would start sketching out things and then um, so that when daytime comes and you don't need the the projector anymore that you're able to know where each spot is and that you can um, start painting from there um, and so you know during the whole mural process while you're painting um, a large-scale mural um, you know it may not be exactly like it is on the rendering or your idea but you can get it pretty close um, and also, you know, it helps you kind of freestyle a little bit where you can fill in certain areas, certain spots, um, and it can um, just actually help you with your skill level and then just kind of try and figure things out as you go. So um, some, some people have asked me what um, is a motivation for me and um, how to build confidence in myself as an artist. Um, and so... I would say when I was younger, I didn't have a whole lot of confidence um, as an artist. Um, I saw a lot of really great art out there, and I was like, "Oh man, I really, I really want to be like those guys." You know, I want to do some great art like them. Um, and it really was just just trying to work hard on your craft, perfect your craft. I guess you would say, spend a lot of time trying to figure things out as an artist. Do your best to do it every day you know if you want to be good at something repent you know repetition and creativity is a whole part of it you know just repeat yourself as far as like every day i'm gonna work on drawing for an hour or every day i'm gonna work on painting for 30 40 minutes or um just trying to figure things out um as far as how to get better um and like you know do educate yourself you know look up what other artists are doing that if you don't know any um artists or just kind of look up your you know local artists you know kind of befriend them you know follow them on social media reach out to them pick their brains about you know what it is or what do they do um as an artist to create such good content or good pieces um that they have created and so for me it was a lot of practice a lot of time a lot of work just doing it every day you know if you want to be good at using spray paint spray paint every day if you want to be good at painting acrylics paint with acrylics every day or watercolors or oils or whatever if you want to be a good sculptor sculpt every day so um, it's really that you know and so that'll I guess the more you do it the better you get and the better you get I guess it helps build more confidence in yourself knowing that you can do whatever it is that's required of you by um, a client by a city or public art call that um, is out there um, and so just you know just keep working on your craft and the more you do it the more comfortable you'll be doing it and so hopefully that'll help you with your um, your level of confidence and motivating you to, to do it. Um, and another recommendation is to never be satisfied. Like, don't become complacent with where you're at. Always want to develop and always want to get better as an artist. The style that I have now is nowhere near what my style was 10 years ago. And so you can always grow as an artist and always learn more um as you grow and get older and so my recommendation is to stay motivated by being around like-minded artists or artists with the same 
ideas or art, I mean or just artists in general and just trying to be around them and um, the more positive that they are the more good that they are the better it is I would say to be around them so that it helps motivate you to to do better um, and that it'll help you uh, move wherever it is you want to be and so just kind of do that and to always do your research always educate yourself um, there's a lot of YouTube videos out there a lot of tutorials and how to do certain things so you know take full advantage of it because none of that was available when I was your age so I would just recommend just use all that all the resources you can get and hopefully it'll work out in your advantage um, if you're just getting started as an artist um, and you would like to transition into painting big scale um, I would recommend um, just getting materials from like your local store and just getting like cardboard or even plywood or whatever it is that you want to paint on a big scale um, and utilize that um, just buy some acrylic paint some paint brushes and if you want to get some basic spray paint you can get rust-oleum spray paint from Walmart or even Home Depot and use those and then um, kind of just work on technique you know just start writing your name doing letters doing shapes all that um, and then you know just really just practice 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 every day take that piece of board into your backyard or garage or wherever you want to put it and start painting on it you know whether it's acrylic paint or spray paint you know I'd recommend just um, starting there you know um, and if you can find a free wall or a legal wall or if they're a business or store or something's allowing you to paint it on the wall then take advantage of it take full advantage of it just go there and just start painting so I'd recommend that um, question I've been asked is what is my uh, or what are some of my favorite artists that have helped me and inspired me as far as um, in my journey as an artist and so it, I talked about it um, in an interview um, and I would say it started from the old contemporary and classic artists uh, like Salvador Dali, uh, Vincent Van Gogh, uh, Paul Gauguin, um, Pablo Picasso. Those are some of my favorite uh, classical artists. And then um, street artists that I grew up around were like MSK Crew, AWR based out of California, um, and, and other artists or crews and graffiti crews like TBK and then in Nevada there was more like TME or Ha crew growing up and a lot of these graffiti street artists um, helped inspire me in, um, in learning how to do spray painting and so I was able to um, paint like a lot of different walls and spaces and just to try to get a feel of using an aerosol can um, and just learning different techniques from other artists, um, street artists and graffiti artists, and just kind of how to blend spray paint and uh, use can control, um, as well as technique and uh, just using the fine details, using different type of tips and stuff. Um, as graffiti kind of became popular, a lot of different companies now produce um, street art based spray paint um, like Montana cans iron lac and so there are a lot of different uh, companies that use uh, spray paint as a, a medium um, for artists um, and and they're that's kind of for every artist not all artists are graffiti artists but a lot of these street artists use spray paint as a medium because of the the quality of the paint that they use and um, a lot of this uh, this technique of spray paint um, can be a lot faster and, and it can also give a lot of detail for some of these murals that people paint. Do I get my current style? Um, and my current style kind of has adapted and evolved from all my experiences from painting as a young kid, from sketching, drawing, doodling um, until now. and so I get my inspiration from different types of artwork um, which is surrealism, contemporary, urban art, street art, graffiti, um, I would say 
cubism, uh, geometric shapes, abstract, um, and then a little bit of, um, I don't know, I would, a little bit of realism, not too much realism, um, but I do like a lot of vibrant colors. Um, and then another, a lot of other elements, including my culture specifically, is where I do a lot of my inspired works. And so the style that I have now is it literally infused with all those type of styles. Um, and I guess depending on the project, I kind of use a little bit more of one style than the other, depending on the project. And so that helps determine and I guess has kind of hunkered down is what my style is today. What I wish I knew in high school um, that I do know now as an artist is using and utilizing all the resources that I could have gotten when I was younger. Um, nowadays, as an as, um, artist, you can get sponsorships um, from paint companies or graffiti art spray paint companies or um, just any type of sponsorship for whoever, whatever company is trying to sponsor you and your projects. You can reach out to those companies and ask them if they would like to sponsor a project that you do have. And you know, what are, whether they supply you with some paint or whether they supply you with like brushes or whatever it is, um, you know, that's great. Anything that can help in uh, the project is, is necessary. Um, another thing is utilize your social media. Um, utilize Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, whatever, LinkedIn, whatever it is that you can use um, to help further your career as an artist and to get you out there. YouTube, obviously, a big one, Facebook, you know, use all the platforms that you can to put your stuff out there. The more you produce and the more things you put out there, the more eyeballs will see you and your stuff and then the more opportunities will come to you. Um, and so a lot of clients, especially private clients that I've received, have come from social media, just from other projects that I've done and people that have seen it and they're like, oh man, I like your work and would you be willing to come and do this and that for me um, because I saw your work in the newspaper or whatever. So take full advantage of that, you know? And so there's a lot of ways that you can make it a career Nowadays, as an artist, whether you're putting artwork on merchandise or just creating an app that has something to do with art, there are a lot of things creatively that you can do um, to help push your career forward. And, and you know, this is a great time and a great um, generation to utilize the best of that and, you know, put it towards your advantage. And so I'd recommend just doing it, you know. TikTok, whatever, all the little apps that everyone does nowadays, utilize everything that you can to help further your art. As long as you're producing art and putting art out there and good good content, the most, the more and most likely you'll get a lot of feedback as well as uh, new opportunities to get clients to do artwork. Okay, I hope some of this information has helped you um, become the artist you want to be um, as far as trying starting um, during the process and then executing mural artwork. I hope you're the best in your journey and may you be successful. Um, and now I'd just like to leave some video clips and some images of some mural artwork that I've done. Take care. The arts acting in a way to reinforce the beauty that we have the colors on these walls that have been created definitely draw your attention and kind of shows um, that the mall is you know transforming and uh, trying to be more accepted to the arts and the arts community. Murals build a sense of community. We had so much success with this in other markets we decided to bring it to Utah. I like to call it creative placemaking. This public-private partnership approach recognizes the arts as vital drivers of community revitalization and development.
girl in the tire that they're running. Listen, baby girl in the tire that they're running. Listen, baby girl in the tire that they're running. Don't stop, don't stop. 